Now let's move on to the finishing side. Once the editorial is locked down, we can now start refining the imagery. What I'd like you to do is click and scroll the positioner to the next shot in the timeline. You will see that the next shot is a school of fish. Now this is a particular underwater shot which we'd like to improve its quality as well as brighten it up so that it becomes more appealing and attractive to the viewer. Now since we're not working with the editorial part anymore, it does not make sense to have the source viewer up all the time because it just takes up place on the interface. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the left of the interface and under source area layout we switch from the source record view, if we click the pop up we can then change it to the standard view. The standard view will give us simply just the output of our timeline and we can now focus directly on our imagery. In order for us to go ahead and perform a color correction or any type of effect on a clip, it all needs to be selected first. So select the clip in the timeline. Everything you do inside of Smoke is selection based so if you wanted to apply an effect to multiple clips, you would simply select those clips before you apply the effect. When a clip is selected, you will notice now to the left of the timeline, you have timeline based effects or what we like to call soft effects. These effects can be applied to a clip and they're also editable at any point in time. The effect we're interested at the moment is the fourth button down which is labeled CC. This stands for color correction. To enable color correction, simply click on the button and color correction is applied to the clip. This is indicated by the blue LED as well as the white line or dotted line above the clip in the edit. The A button next to the CC button stands for auto key. Let's turn this off for now and the E button in the timeline tells us to enter into the effects editor. Now don't be alarmed by the interface you see, this is simply a transparent overlay which allows you to work with the full image the whole time as you're grading. So if I was to adjust any qualities or values, the interface will adjust itself so you always get the maximum amount of image when you're doing your adjustments. Now this is the standard color corrector and the color corrector allows us to grade color using a color wheel, values, histogram as well as curves. There is another type of color grading tool inside of Smoke known as the Color Warper. To access the Color Warper, we come to the left hand side of the interface where we will see a button labeled CC. Simply by clicking on this button, it will switch to CW which brings you into the Color Warper. The Color Warper allows you to grade using tracking balls and this can all be driven either by the pen or the tablet, the mouse or an Avid Artist Series color grading panel. So you can choose what type of mechanism you would like to drive your color correction with. Now in order for us to do the grading here, we can first go ahead and start working with the main part of the image. So in this case as an underwater shot, it might be slightly murky due to dust in the water. So the first thing we'll do is adjust the contrast. So what I'd like you to do is on the bottom left of the interface, you will see that there's a value called black and a value called white. We can go ahead and adjust the black levels so we start pulling and crushing down the black in the picture as well as being able to adjust the white. When we do this, you can see already the picture is starting to stand out a lot better. If at any point I'd like to see what the original looked like, we can come to the right of the play controls and there is a button labeled preview effects. If we click and hold this pop up down, you will see that the other option you have is view source. When you choose view source, this will show you the original. So here we have the before and if I switch to preview effects, we then have the after. You can simply toggle through this in the interface or you could map this to your favorite hotkey. Now by leaving it on preview effects, we can carry on grading. So we've sorted out the murkiness in the water but what we also would like to do is we'd like to enhance a color in the image. In this case perhaps the yellow or greeny color that we have inside the fish. To do this we're going to rely on something called color selectives. Currently on the left hand side of the interface the system is working on the master. This means it's working on the overall image. You can switch this option from master to selection 1. The image will go black and white and it goes into selection mode. 
In order for us to select a color, we come to the bottom right of the interface and you will see the define operations. If you click pick custom once, you will get an eyedropper. With this eyedropper, we'll simply go ahead and click on the color tail of the fish. If you don't get the color right the first time, simply pick custom again and try again until you get it right. Now in this view, we have simply isolated the color that we wish to grade. Now what Smoke is doing is the color warper is in fact pulling a key on this color. So if we wish to refine it further, we could simply come to the keying controls on the right of the interface and fine tweak and tune the key. But in order for us to grade, we need to switch back to the result view to see it in context of the contrast adjustment we made. So let's go over to the left of the interface and under the view option, we are currently viewing the selective. If you click this button and hold it, you can see we can now switch from the selective to the result and now we're seeing our grade in context. In this case, we're going to do something really straightforward and simple. Under the highlights tracking ball, simply adjust the saturation and we'll increase it to a value approximately about 2. You can now see how the yellow and green have been enhanced in the picture of the fish. You can also note how much brighter the image looks. Let's compare this again. So come to the right of the interface, choose preview effects. If I switch it back to view source, that is what we had and preview effects is now what we have. So the power of the color warper gives us the ability to work on a whole variety of aspects of the image to enhance it and make it look a lot better than it was originally coming into the system. Now that we're complete with the color correction, what we can now do is press the exit button and this will exit us back to the timeline. If we wish to review this shot, you could drag the positioner back and press play or a better hotkey would be to press Alt L and Alt L will simply loop the selected clip in the timeline. You will notice that once the loop has finished, it jumps back to that clip in the timeline again. This is a very useful workflow tool because if you're constantly reviewing and adjusting your clip, it means you do not have to go through the steps of manually moving your positioner around every time you wish to review a shot.